Yo guys, what's going on? Blossom is back and welcome back to another episode of Top Drives. Now, just like the first part, we are now jumping into the second part of every single prize car that has been released in Top Drives. Now, I'm adding every single prize car uh, that doesn't count kind of like the the Moby Dick Arc series, we're not doing that around here. So we're not adding those, no ultra rares, no super rares, no commons, but I am adding in every single tri-series and the special legendary challenges of the special tags. So get yourself a nice drink, have a seat and enjoy uh, this longer journey. Unlike the first part, there's gonna be a little bit more talking here because you know, my memory is a little better. And I know in the first part, I showed my winning hands for most of the prize cards that I won. This this time I'm also gonna try and put in hands for prize cards that I lost. Uh, especially when we get closer to 2021, my memory's a little more fresh, so I remember what I was using when I won or lost that prize card. But like I said, it's gonna be a little bit more commentary this time, uh, but get yourself a nice drink, sit back, relax, and let's get into the history of Top Drive's prize cars, part two. All right, so we begin with the BMW M8 GTE came out in January 5th, 2020, the first prize car of the new year. Uh, the convertibles, I mean, or not the convertibles, the requirements were times five 2010 rear wheel drive convertibles that I wouldn't know. And here's a fun fact, the M8 GTE qualifiers was muscle car times five and the event actually ended on my birthday, which was December 30th, 2019. Uh, I turned 20 that year and my hand was like basically just a bunch of dodges. I got tier one, amazing, amazing time. I got myself a nice little epic as well. And I think the prize card that they gave out at the time was the uh, yellow Porsche Boxer S. I think that was the name, but that was a great way to start off the year. I didn't win the prize car, but I had a lot of fun in the qualifiers. I guess you can say it was a great way to end the year. But anyway, let's move on to the next couple of prize cars. That is the first prize car I won in 2020. It was the Lamborghini Huracan Performante. And as you can see, the hand that I used, two low to succeed, two 65Es, and a Vora 280, supercharged, and a 340R. Only two, sorry, only three out of the five cars were maxed. One of the two 65s, one of the 340Rs, and one of the 211 supercharges. But the other Exige and the Evora were both kind of stock. I think they were at one star, and I got rid of both of them eventually. Alright, February 16, 2020, and I guess you can say February 15, 2020 as well. What a hell of a time. It was the most stress I've ever had in a final. I've gone through the Eurus, I've gone through the Yesco, I've gone through the, well, the Yesco Absolute, I guess, and I've gone through the Zonda Revolution, but I have to say that the most stress-inducing prize car that has ever happened was the Bugatti Chiron Sport, or the Bugatti Chiron Sport. 36 hours, I stayed awake for this bad boy, playing every single ticket until the final two hours where I spent over a thousand gold on buying tickets and servicing. This was absolutely insane. I had a very, very tough fight. Um, obviously, you look at my hand, two legendaries, three epics. Obviously, they were all maxed besides the Bentega. Bentega was one star and the Evora, as it is, you know, today is the same tune. Six, six, nine, one fuse away from being a max legend. Why this was such an uphill battle for me was because my Evora was the weakest of the legends in Great Exhibition. So I was coming up against people that had the, you know, 12C GT3 or the 720S GT3 or even if you had a DBS Super Legera or, you know, even a McLaren, one of the McLaren 675 Spiders, it would have taken my Evora Sport 410 to gapple bees if they were all at one star. So I had to basically just max mine out just so it could stand toe to toe with some of the other legends in the game. Uh, I had a max out 265E, which was, uh, you know, recycled Continental GT Speed Coupe, which I had, uh, what was it, uh, 699, and a Land Rover Defender Works V8 that was 969. This was very, very stressful, but one of my biggest achievements to date. Really happy with this prize car win. So let's move on to the next couple of you.
If, if there was ever a way to showcase my confidence in top drives, it would be to this, the MG Metro 6R4 Clubman. Now, fun fact, this is the last epic tri-series we've ever had in top drives. We've, had, we've never had one since. March 29th, 2020 is the last time we saw an epic in a tri-series. Um, and as you can see, I had a lot of fun with my hand. Bear in mind, ACR, uh, obviously Hollywood was maxed, but Bollywood actually wasn't maxed at the time. My SRT Viper was at two stars, uh, and obviously I had three maxed out Charger Hellcats. I had a lot of fun with this. Obviously ended in the top spots, five times Dodge. It was a great time, it was a great time. And obviously the MG Metro is a car that I've wanted to max in my garage for, well, basically since March 29, 2020, but I've never gotten around to doing that because I've always been putting my fuse material in different avenues, but really happy with with this win. guys as you can see now I'm putting in a new section called MVP because most of these prize cars I won in the same location it was either Singapore or Malaysia and it wasn't like anything special like a shopping mall or a, a plane like like in uh, 2018 and that's because you know in 2020 we experienced the lockdown so there was not much I could do not many places I could go and obviously if I was in Asia I'll be winning prize cars at 5 in the morning so even if I wanted to go somewhere I wouldn't be somewhere at 5 a.m. so I'm gonna change it to MVP the MVP for the Lamborghini Urus was my Porsche 911 GT2 RS. I've had this car forever since 2017 um, and it has won me a lot of prize cars but it hasn't won me one in a while up to the Urus um, and I'm really happy that I got to use it again. Currently my 911 GT2 RS is at 366. It is one fuse away from being a two-star legendary and I really want to get it there. It really deserves to be a two-star legendary. Great little legend uh, handles over a hundred when you max it out and it has also a hundred MRA so fantastic little car but let's move on from the Urus. So for those of you who might be a newer subscriber to my channel and you just came across this video, you might be thinking this has to be a joke right? My winning hand was in five Challenger SRT Hellcats. No, no, I'm not joking, guys. If you are new to the channel and you think this is a joke, no, it's recorded. It's on my channel. You can check it out. Um, at one point, I think I owned about eight of these green Hellcats and I reduced it down to six. I'm keeping it six. So I won six white, six green, six yellow. And I know a lot of people were laughing at me when I said I was going to get six wide bodies. I'm on two right now, four more to go. And obviously I think, you know, I got to keep it in theme, right? Six, six, six for the three Hellcats. It kind of just makes sense but obviously I used five to win the 177 that is not a joke this is actually what I had and three of the Hellcats were maxed so yeah I have three green challenger Hellcats maxed I'm not even uh, I'm not even embarrassed about that that's a flex if anything I also have three of the white charger Hellcats maxed uh, when you think about it I have seven Hellcats maxed in my garage um, but absolutely loving it uh, use one of my favorite cars in, of all time to win one of my favorite cars of all time. The 177 is probably my third favorite Aston Martin ever made, only behind the DB5 and the DBS Super Legera. So this was kind of a huge blossom moment. Really, really happy. May 28, 2020. I will never forget you. So for this one, I'm only putting in two cars because I forgot what were the three other cars I used. I think I used a Stingray and like two other cars, but to be completely honest with you guys, I forgot the entire hand I used for this. So I'm only going to put in Hollywood and Bollywood because I know for sure that I used both of them. So yeah, MVP Hollywood. Let's get it.
I found this one pretty funny that uh, I used the Malibu. I had to watch back the video uh, that I posted of me winning the Huara BC. And yes, I did in fact use a Chevrolet Malibu in one of the track sets. Um, but yeah, I was really happy with this. Once again, the Bentega coming back. I think this is the third or fourth prize car now that the Bentega W12 has won me. It's, it's weird how this works sometimes, truly. Uh, it's not a good legendary, but it, you know, it's been uh, required in a lot of the uh, finals. So yeah, Bentega W12, we meet again. Think about it, 2020 was the same year I won the Bugatti, uh, Chiron Sport, and the Viper GTSR. It's actually kind of crazy to think that that was in the same year. It felt like, you know, 2020 was so incredibly long. Um, but yeah, I would say that even though the Bugatti is probably one of my proudest moments, I would have to say the Viper GTSR stands up there along with the Bugatti Chiron Sport win. Um, obviously, the MVP is Blossig slash Pops, because if you remember, if you guys remember, the packs that I opened for the Viper GTSR finals, you know, those Swedish packs, I think half of them were actually sponsored by Pops, and it was the packs that were sponsored by Pops um, that actually got me the Koenigsegg Agera R, later known as Blossegg. Uh, we also got a second Koenigsegg, which was the CCXR, I believe, which is called Kai Egg. And, and then obviously I used the rest of the uh, Volvos in this hand because I had to. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of that V90 T6. I think it's the second time you've seen it. I think you'll see it one more time again. Uh, I think I used it three times. I'm not too sure. We'll check it out. But I was really proud of the Viper GTSR. It is two fuses away from being max. I have my Viper GTSR, I believe, at 369 as we stand. So two more fuses, and I would have four max Vipers in my garage. You guys remember this? I put the MVP as peer pressure for a reason, and that was because I actually didn't have a hand that could beat the Vulcan. Um, in the final round, all I had was the Phaeton, the Gumper the Polo, the Pagani Huara BC, and the Lamborghini Diablo GT that I had at one star, and I was one car short. I was basically one epic short or one legend short. I was looking for an epic, and I remember uh, I was so desperate, I was like, okay, I had two choices. I either max the Gumper or Polo or go for a times five car. Carbon. So I went for the Elite Pact, opened that, I got 5 Ultra Rares, and it was devastating. And then everyone in the stream was like, yo, open a single Carbon Fiber Pack, just one. And I got peer pressured into opening one Ride the Valkyrie single Carbon Fiber Pack, and that got us the Gumpert Apollo Basic, and I won the Vulcan immediately afterwards. It was insane, probably the biggest clutch moment of 2020, and I have to say the MVP went to peer pressure. So shout out to everyone that was in the stream on that day, because you guys basically just won me the Vulcan because you won me the Gumpert Apollo Basic because you peer pressured me into opening a carbon fiber. So shout out to you guys. There you have it guys, those are the prize cars that I won in 2020, not including the MG Metro and obviously the Miura SVJ and the Titanium Pack, which are all honorable things that I won in the year. But these were all the legendary prize cars I won in 2020. I have to say, out of the bunch, if I had to pick my favorite, it would be the Viper GTSR. Um, my top three, I would say, would be the Vulcan, Viper GTSR, and 177 in terms of sentimental value. But in terms of the amount 
amount of usefulness that the prize cars have gotten me in 2020, I would say that the most useful cars I've gotten from this batch will be the Zonda Revolution, Bugatti, Chiron Sport, uh, Huracan Performante, and the... Yeah, I would say McLaren Senna, really. Um, I don't use the Pikes Peak as often as I thought I would. I wouldn't be, I'm not using the Urus as often as I thought I would. And I think that's the main reason to that is because they don't have off-road tires. They have all surface tires. And I think I would have been better off if I won the Lancia S2 Delta or whatever because of that off-road tire capability. Now, out of every car here, the most useless ones, the ones that I barely use would be the F1 GTR Short Tail. As much of an amazing car that is, I barely use it. The Corvette ZR1, one and the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ. I have to say though, I am very happy with all the prize cards I won in 2020. All of them are 90 and above besides I think two, which are the 177 and the ZR1. But anyway, that wraps up 2020. Let's go into 2021, baby. We are almost there. <music> I'm sure you guys remember this, right? I maxed out Syracuse, my Viper TA on stream in about, what, a minute and a half, 90 seconds? Huge moment, that obviously was a massive win. Not a lot of people had the TA max at the time, but for the next finals, a lot of people would have had the TA max by then. Um, the Ford Mustang FR was huge. Nobody saw me unpack that, I, I, I got that off camera. Uh, but the GT4 was amazing. The Viper SRT10, which I ended up getting three, and we'll be seeing them used a lot in in the future as well but the Koenigsegg 1-1 was my first tri-series win of 2021 not the first prize car because the first prize car was a Volkswagen from the challenge but the Koenigsegg 1-1 was my first tri-series win of 2021 what a massive massive car uh, absolutely loving it I use it a bunch but let's move on <laughs> here guys lowest point in top drives 2021 i was absolutely gutted uh with this one did i win it obviously not i got 11th place two maxed out 911 gt uh, gt2s obviously they're not maxed out in this slideshow but they were maxed out in my garage the reason why i'm using the stock pictures is because i'm saving them from top drives club and they're all stock over there you know i had a I upgraded my lamborghini Munchilago, so my Munchilago was a 111 it was 121 and obviously I had a corsa and a jag xkrr i was one epic away from winning the xjr9 and i really really wanted it i was so desperate that i actually opened eight carbon fibers off camera 30 minutes before uh, the finals ended, all right? And I thought, you know what? Eight CFs, I can get one epic, all right? I was in a situation where even if I got the worst epic, it would have improved my hand significantly. And I remember I opened all 15 packs for Umbang for this final, and I got him like, what, four, five Corvette C5? So I was like, you know what? One epic and eight, we could definitely do it. I was completely wrong. I think I got like five or six of the Ford Explorers, and then I got like two Jaguar X times. It was absolutely horrendous. Packs didn't give out, and I lost this car. Huge opportunity out of my, you know, out of my grasp. So I would say this is my lowest point in top drives in 2021 thus far. Hopefully, I won't get anything lower than the Jaguar XJR9. Because I remember I was eating cardboard like the month after this. And it wasn't even worth it because I didn't even win the Jag. But anyway, let's move on because we do bounce back. <laughs> Everybody knows 
does this? Fresh in the mind? Yes, go absolute. I had to max out my 959 to win this car. But like I said, I wasn't going to let the opportunity slip like I did with the uh, Jaguar XJ9. So I'm happy that I got the yes, go absolute. And like I said, we do bounce back. But this is the last car, obviously, up to this video being posted. The next one is the Chrysler ME412 rerun. But I don't know if I'm going to win it. I don't know what my hand is going to be. But we do know that the requirements are going to be 2007 petrol and diesel only. I am looking pretty good, but I might think that I might be being a little overconfident. So we'll find out what the track sets are. We'll find out what my bracket is. And who knows? I might have another car added to the 2021 list. But let's get back to my top drives account. Well, lads, that just about wraps everything up. That is every single prize car since the beginning of top drives in a two part series. Obviously, I had more to talk about in the second part because everything else is fresher in the mind, fresher in the memory, you know, in the first First part, I only remembered the prize cards that I won, but this this part I remember prize cards that I won and prize cards that I didn't. Um, it's nice to see, you know, just the journey, and I would love to continue making the slideshow just kind of for myself. This is a great way of documenting, you know, the cars that I've used uh, to win me other prize cards, and you know how many times they've been repeated. Uh, like the Bentley, we've seen it a couple times. The Bentayga, the Viper SRT 10 has come back a couple times. Uh, the Volvo, I think S80 uh, also came back a couple times. The XC50. No, XC40, T5, all-wheel drive, whatever that thing is called. That came back a couple times as well. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it. Let me know how many prize cards have you won since you started playing the game. Is it 1, 2, 100,000? All of them, if your name is Brench. Uh, but I hope you guys have a great day. I'm going to stay safe, wash your hands, and I hope you enjoyed the series. Had a lot of fun doing this. I know it's only two episodes. It's a really short one, but I think it was a lot of fun. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. I'm going to stay safe, wash your hands, and blossom out. Peace.